Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. For those of you who are new, make sure that you subscribe and check out my previous videos that might answer some of your questions. Also, today's video will be about a how-to video on how to start your own clothing line. I did already make a video on this topic, so make sure you check it out. I'll link it in my description box or I'll create the card somewhere up above. But this video is going to be kind of more a little bit in depth on, you know, what I did to start my business and as far as like marketing and some tips for you and how to get like, you know, celebrity clientele. So first things first, um, from my experience, I did not, no one taught me how to sew. I did learn in high school, but everything that I know now, I had to teach myself. And then I watched YouTube videos that, you know, kind of showed me some of the techniques. But ultimately, I ended up having to just teach myself. I had to teach myself how to draw, how to design, and everything. So there's not like this one set way to become a designer. Honestly, there's a difference between being a seamstress and then being a designer. I personally am both, but I'm better at designing than I am at um, sewing. For one, I don't have the time to sew anymore, so that's why I don't have my... Um, company anymore. It started in 2012 and I made everything from jackets to dresses to skirts to tops, you know, lace, leather, everything. So um, I started from nothing, honestly, and I was my own model. I did not have a mannequin. I made everything on the floor. I did not use floor patterns. I basically use pins to kind of pin everywhere that I want to cut my fabric and I pinned to sew it as well so you know check out that previous video like I said for the the those you know basic tips but um for those of you who are more so trying to start the clothing line as far as like okay you already have a seamstress you are or you are the seamstress you already have the designs so where you go from there I actually got accepted on the to I guess you could say, apply. well, I applied to the show, but I was like, actually, like, accepted to actually come and audition in person to get on this show, Fashion Star, which was back in 2012 or whatever. And that was, you know, where you get, it was kind of like Project Runway, where there are three buyers that automatically buy your designs, like, straight off of the runway. And that was perfect. But, you know, that show ran out. So what I did was I contacted some buyers. One of them was Caprice Willard. She's, she was, I don't know if she's still the buyer at Macy's, but she was one of the head buyers for Macy's. So I talked with her. We chat on, you know, Twitter. And she gave me some good tips. And this is what I'm going to say. So for one, of course, if you have your designs already ready and you have like a sample collection, then even if you do or don't have a manufacturer, you need to contact a buyer whether it's dealers or whatever. Now, how to contact a buyer? Use your resources, use social media. I found her on Twitter and I DM'd her and she DM'd me back. That's how that worked. Also, by emails. Sometimes they'll have a business email in their you know, profiles or you can get on LinkedIn. That's one of the best ways to contact professionals and maybe they'll call you back. Or call the corporate number and then get, you know, try to find their extension that way. And then you can schedule a meeting with them and you know, it'll go from there. Now, I never got a chance to do that because I honestly quit before I could actually go that route with doing like mainstream. That's the more direct way to actually get your clothing in stores. Now, that is kind of pricey because like I said, you will need to have a lot of money to do the whole collection. Like they will want to see finished products. Now, I mean, if you have great designs and you have some of the clothing then sometimes they'll work with you and they may help you find a manufacturer but I would just say to be prepared as much as possible come in with all of your designs and you know be ready to you know talk negotiations talk about you know the profits what you expect you know you know all that now I would say to start on the lower end when you're starting independently like I did I reached out to bad girls um, Erica, Natalie, Erica from season eight, Natalie, all these girls have worn my dresses and promoted them at parties or wherever. Natalie Nunn from season four, Erica from season eight, season seven, Judy and Tiara and Sarah. I love Sarah. I love all these girls. Sarah from season 11. Uh, there's a few more. Nicole from Nikki from, she was actually supposed to wear mine to her reunion, but I didn't get it shipped in time. Uh, she's from season 10. 
there's a few more I'm forgetting. I can't remember right now, but Judy, Judy's the one who's worn my clothes the most. So what I did to contact those girls, of course, just hit up their booking information on their social media profiles. I emailed them and I showed them pictures and that was very, very nice. All of them were very nice and pleasant, the experience. Also for more high profile celebrities, Shawnee O'Neal agreed to wear my designs as well as Laura Govan from that show Basketball Wives. What I did was I talked, I emailed Shawnee's at the time her uh, stylist or either her PR, PR person and she told she sent the designs to Shawnee and she liked them. Now I was so poor to the point where I couldn't even afford to send her the designs. So that's the only reason why she did not wear them because I couldn't send them. That sucked. So the next opportunity was with Laura Govan. I actually spoke, no, Gloria, I'm sorry, Matt Barnes' ex-wife, Gloria. I actually spoke with her on the phone personally and her manager. So it was like my first time ever talking to a celebrity. I was like, wow, like, wow. And she was so supportive. She was like, you know, I really want to support your designs. And yeah, just, you know, let's work. I was so poor. Like, I was married at the time. And we were jet, like, dead serious poor. That's why I say you will have to have some money. And I never could send her the designs. So those were just opportunities that just slipped out of my hands to work with, like, top, you know, celebrities at the time. Um, also, Jennifer Williams from that show, she agreed to wear some. There are so many more celebrities I can't even think of right now. Drea, at the time she was working with um, her stylist, I can't think of his name, but he wanted me to send her some stuff. I couldn't send her anything either. It sucked, but I did manage to get the bad girl stuff to wear my stuff. Even Camila, she agreed to wear some stuff. I think she did end up wearing a dress of mine or a swimsuit. I did a swimsuit collection too, and that's what Sarah wore my swimsuits. Um, but yeah, all you have to do is actually reach out to them, reach out to their PR people, kind of like stalk them to see who, who works for them. Like, you know, and if, when all those fails, just email their booking agent or whatever, and they'll direct you to the right person. And most of the time, these girls aren't that much of celebrities. They'll actually respond to you themselves. Like Natalie, Je not, not throwing shade, but Natalie was pretty much her own businesswoman at the time. So she was responding to me directly, you know, had her number or her address. Um, I had Judy's cell phone number. Um, I had Tiara. I don't even remember if I had Tiara's number too. Sometimes with that, you don't always get the guarantee of them wearing it, but you know, that's just a way to get your brand out there as far as being independent. I would definitely start with that first because when a buyer, even if you do get to meet a buyer and you're trying to go mainstream, they're going to look at it like, you know, this is a business proposition. Like, what are we gaining from this? You're not that popular. So who's going to actually buy your clothing? Like, we need to know these types of things. So that's why I said starting off as independent will really help you in getting, when they see that you have celebrity clientele, that that's going to make them, you know, more interested. Now, if your designs are just that bomb, then it may work. If, if anything, I will tell you to try to emulate the designs that are already in that store and just put your spin on it. And pretty much they'll kind of, you know, take it. But, um... That's been my success so far. I, like I said, I quit two years ago because I felt like that wasn't my purpose at the time. And I just didn't have the time to actually sit and sew because I was teaching and I had other engagements that I wanted to pursue. So that was just it on that. I still have all of my designs and in the future I may pursue it again because I'm really tired of like seeing thought clothing everywhere. I really like to dress like a classy 40s chick with my suit. And, you know, just being really cute and businesslike, but, like, still, you know, not just saying sexy, but, like, you know, classy, really classy. You know, so much stuff today looks the same, so I just really want to do my own designs again, but I don't have the time. But um, other than that, you know, of course, the business part of that, I think I already talked about that in the other part, where, you know, you need to have your logo, have your name and your brand, everything, um... Trade, not trademark, but copyrighted, copyright, trademark, whatever. And, you know, that's pretty much it for that. But this is more so on the marketing side. Also, um, I was invited to do the Facet, is it Facet? Fashion Week in LA, the swim, the swim show, the one that Drea participates in. Do you guys know I had a church event that I had to go to that whole week? I had to be in St. Louis. I was so hurt. But I should... I don't know, I shouldn't have gone because I would have wasted my time, but it was just an honor to be invited to stuff like that. Also, trying to, well, you can apply to your local fashion weeks if you can't get into New York because it's going to be hard to get into New York Fashion Week as a fresh designer. So, what's going to help you 
those most of those fashion weeks will require you to at least have a clothing line out or two so like i said just get your material out there start selling start your boutique or whatever and apply to your local like nashville has a nice fashion week st louis even has a nice fashion week dallas has a really nice one it's really nice and definitely la and even the facet i don't know if i'm saying it right faucet um fashion week they're pretty lenient on who they let you know let in and if you have nice designs they'll work with you you know it's all about networking if you're in that field you don't have to live in new york you don't have to move to new york you really don't I'm just being honest now as far as fabric goes the best fabric is in new york and in miami and la those three cities honestly the best fabric now you can always order online from mood in new york so that's no biggie but in la the fashion district yeah you have to go there in person especially when you're thinking about spandex type clothing oh my gosh the biggest spandex house in america is the one in miami it was like it was so beautiful but it's so far so and, and it's cheap a lot of these girls are selling dresses for like two or three hundred dollars and the, and the freaking material is only ten dollars such a ripoff but spandex dresses and stuff are pretty much for like swimsuits and thought clothes so you know anyway um yeah that's it pretty much for my tips i don't know what else you guys want me to talk about i just you know kind of gave these tips because some of you have been asking me about it since i made the previous video i do not know about any manufacturers well i do know about some you can you can google them and most of them are overseas but i've not worked with any so that's why i don't want to recommend any i don't know yet but you can google clothing manufacturers custom clothing manufacturers and they will work with you um some of them will you know take your designs now to be on the smart side you should make them sign a waiver that they won't steal your designs or something like that you can get on a swipe not swipe it's um i used to have it on my phone when i was doing that it's something with an s i can't think of it it's an app though it's like a legal app that has templates for stuff like that to protect you i can't think of it crap i almost had it i think it's swift or something like that. i don't remember but you know so that they won't steal your designs but to be honest with stuff like fashion nova and naked wardrobe all those businesses that are owned by asians and koreans they're just winning right now in the, in the fashion scene people are always going to steal your designs the asian people are always going they're always going to steal designs and make their own cheap fashions so that's going to be really discouraging but it is what it is you have to be prepared to be disappointed sometimes but i mean if you stick with it i guess you know it will work out for you i hope the best and comment below if you have any comments make sure you subscribe and check out my previous videos thank you so much for watching and see you guys in the next video